culture. It is. I mean, I think any culture that the sport is important, kids are going to play on the street. They're going to play on their spare time. They're going to turn on the TV and see a game. They're going to want to go outside and replicate it. And so we see that here with, with basketball. And you see participation in massive numbers in soccer. But we want to get those kids playing informally, right? Like that's the difference. That's when the culture has hit a tipping point. The kids are going out and they're meeting their friends at the park and they're playing. I grew up a basketball fan. I grew up a Laker fan. And it's pretty apparent that uh, there are similarities between the two sports. I think both sports are on the incline, while other sports in this country seem to be a little bit on the decline. And the reason for that is I think they're tapping into the millennial culture, uh, the hip hop culture, the urban culture. And I think basketball does that really well. And I think Major League Soccer is starting to do that really well, too. We've talked a lot on the show about culture, but mostly off the field, how people are connected to their club, how players are connected to their communities. But culture matters as far as how we play on the field as well. In North America, it's a lot more structured environments, coaches, uh, training sessions, drills. That's not how the game's being played in other places. It's a lot more intuitive, street soccer style. It's actually a lot more like basketball's being played here. Everybody sees the end product, but tell me about your development, playing soccer specifically, and mm -hmm. how you first kind of got into it. It's much different now, as you can imagine, and as you know you lived, than it was when we were starting to come up. So I didn't have, I was gonna say I don't have great, I didn't have great coaches. I didn't really have coaches, period. I had one good coach uh, when I was about 12 or 13. But other than that, everything I did was on my own. And so you talk about the basketball crossover and how it's similar to soccer. When I see kids on the streets playing basketball or just dribbling a basketball or shooting at a random hoop in the middle of New York City, that's how I grew up playing soccer. I mean, I took a soccer ball outside and I kicked the ball against the curb for hours. There's no replacement for that. You can learn all the tactics and formations and all this stuff, but there's no replacement for just touching the ball and learning how to play on your own. I did the same thing. My, mine was probably in my house more though. I used to set up chairs uh, and like dribble around them. And I'm sure your parents should, love that. Yeah, my mom really happy just basically <laughs> breaking everything in the house. I know. <laughs> Thanks for coming out everybody. It's an honor for us to be able to do this for the ninth year. can do it without your support. Hopefully it'll be the best one ever. We'll do it again next year. Thank you. It's a really cool event. It's going to the Steve Nash Foundation. They do everything from helping kids who are facing poverty, illness. It's really cool that they're doing this, and, and you can see just it's a bunch of his friends who have come out from basketball, soccer, different circles coming together to have a good time. Can't go wrong. Second time here at the Steve Nash event, showdown. Still can't get the call up to play, but uh, I'm going to give these guys a hard time until they let me on the field. Steve puts the Chelsea goalkeeper on his squad uh, and NYCFC ticket guy on the other team. Very convenient. I uh, think this, this may be rigged. I need to see more from Landon early. I know it's early in the match, but it's, it's just got to be better. Oh, look at him. He's still not getting back on defense. That's what happened in those MLS Cups. He's just cherry picking. Landon, why are you always cherry picking, man? Staying up top, and he gets all the glory. I already know how this game's going to end. Landon's gonna wait till late, give the other team some hope, maybe even let a guy like myself get a goal, maybe feel good about themselves, get their hopes up, and then crushes him. Steps up, he gets the glory, he knows what he's doing. I I'm not bitter though, I'm not bitter about it. Landon, congrats man, you know? You got your, you got your MLS Cups, I hope you're happy. I'm happy for you. When I was in high school, 90% of my basketball education, so to speak, was informal. You know, I'd go to practice, but 90% of my games and plays and shots were outside of practice, you know, and that's because I had friends that loved it and we could see it on TV all the time. And that's what it's like for football in most countries, you know, that's, it's everywhere and that's what you do. There's not even a choice. You're, we're going to go, you guys want to play, we're going to play football. So in, the, in our country, and it's also, we're also now competing with smartphones and screens and stuff. So. It's just something that's going to take time, but it is, it's coming around and you learn the most things when you teach yourself, you know, and then you refine it with coaching. Irv Smalls was a football guy, won the Rose Bowl at Penn State, but he's a soccer guy now. After working a few years at MLS, he saw a gap in opportunity in the inner city and started a club, FC Harlem, tucked away between the West Side Highway and the train tracks. If you didn't know where to look, you might just miss it. Why Harlem? 
I say, why not soccer here? There was a perception that, you know, soccer is a white sport. You know, we don't play. And you're trying to bring a sport that we don't play here. You're trying to change the community with the sport. And I had to deal with a lot of that within my own communities. That's why I tell people, like, it's, we've always taken an approach here that it's kind of like it's community first, culture, a cool aspect, and then soccer. If someone says there are fields like this one here, that sends a message I can play there, you know? And I think that's really important. I remember Henri was here with the Red Bulls and he said, don't let anyone tell you that a field like this is not good enough. I wish I had a field like this when I was growing up. He said this would be a great place to learn. Lions on three. One, two, three, Lions! FC Harlem represents a new path for these kids to be seen by MLS clubs. And they're taking notice. MLS academies didn't exist just a few years ago, and now they're providing professional training for players from diverse economic backgrounds, building fields in underserved neighborhoods. This is going to have such a good impact on the lives of our children. NYCFC recently announced an initiative to build 50 fields in the next five years, I'm adding to the mini pitches already built by U.S. Soccer Foundation and MLS Works alongside the New York Red Bulls. We've started to create some mini pitches here and there, um, you know, whether that's in Newark or whether that's in the city. And it's important if you if we want to tap into or be part of that urban base of soccer, it's important to create pitches. There's a lot of concrete, uh, and so how can we how can we be part of creating spaces where kids can play? As a young player, you really learn through trial and error, and in those environments, it really gives you the opportunity to try really cool, neat tricks, things that you might not try in a, in a structured environment. Soccer, uh, it's, it's, it's the most diverse game in, in the world, and it's played by, by everyone of all different races, shapes, sizes, genders. A, a, a local kid has got to be able to look up at the first team roster uh, and see someone on Red Bull Arena and see that maybe they either look like them or maybe they came from their area of town. Maybe they grew up with the same socioeconomic status, um, whatever the case, but those commonalities are, are really, really important. You hear all the time, if our best athletes, and I think by that they mean black people, uh, played soccer instead of basketball, or NBA players played basketball, that we would be better off. Do you, do you, what are you, what's your take on it? Um, well, again, I don't think it's that simple. Sometimes a conversation comes up that says, LeBron James is playing soccer. It'd be so much better. Maybe those skills don't automatically translate, but I do know what they're talking about. There is often, I think, within African Americans, whether you're in an inner city environment, whether you grew up in a suburban environment like I did in Hershey, there is, there's a fight and drive that we have that often comes out in sports. That comment is being heard by us, or you hear from us, because we know what we can bring to the table. It's like, show us where we can play this game, teach us, we'll listen. We might add something extra to it that you know what, everybody else likes seeing it in basketball, you like seeing it in football, you see it in tennis, let us bring it to you in soccer. Soccer traditionally, I mean I hate to say it, but it's been sort of a rich person sport in this country, right? Because of the whole pay to play structure. I hope that changes because Soccer is such a beautiful game when you can just go and play. Sometimes we look at how we can develop and we are always looking for more. Like, could the answer possibly be less? I don't think there's any question that that could be the answer. Now, at a certain age you need some structure and you need to learn things the right way, but I learned in three ways. Playing, watching on TV, and this sounds really stupid, but playing video games. And I just like watching that and saying, oh, like this guy did this in the game, or he made that pass, or that's what a through ball is, or that's how you hit a corner hit. And that's how I learned. I didn't have somebody telling me or teaching me. You just learn by doing and by watching. And I think that's a really good way to learn for some people. People here in the U.S. are obsessed with what's next. Who's next for U.S. soccer? Uh, everybody's got their own idea, a magic bullet that's going to solve everything, whether that's promotion relegation or where's our next Lionel Messi. I say pump the bricks, it's going to take a little bit of time. And we're developing our own culture, our own style of play. And look, if we spent half the time, I think, complaining about what we don't have and trying to copy other places and spent more time rolling up our sleeves and creating our own, you can see people starting to do that, especially here in New York City, whether that's the, uh, the development academies, all the fields carving out spaces for these kids, or guys like Irv and FC Harlem who are really giving kids who haven't had a chance before, underrepresented minorities, a chance to really uh, get out there and express themselves and make the game their own. New York basketball has its own personality, its own 
swagger. And you can see soccer slowly starting to develop that. What is a New York player? Uh, it's going to be fun to watch.